Hello, I'm Sarah Pierce and welcome to this free art lesson on making a wind chime. Here I have um, a slab of clay laid out. I went ahead and threw it out and rolled it with my rolling pin to about one fourth inch thick. The type of clay that I'm using is a high fire stoneware clay so that once it gets fired it's very strong and can withstand being um, hit in the wind, hit, hitting itself in the wind. So what I've done is I've laid out the clay in an area that I like and I made a top shape that I wanted to use which is sort of like a crescent moon and I just sort of drew it out with my pencil, my fingers mostly, and the clay shaper. And so that once I finally begin to cut it, I have the right shape. You're going to want to make it big enough that it can withstand the weight of all of your little clay pieces that are going to be dangling from it. So I'm just sort of outlining it right now. Now I have a cookie cutter of a star. These are going to be the smaller shapes that are dangling from the top of my wind chime. I'm going to have four strands that are going to be hanging. And on each strand, I'd like to have two stars. So I'm going to go ahead and make eight stars. Starting. Just do them just like you'd do cookies, right? As close together as you can get them. Make sure that your clay that you're using is not a low fire clay. Low fire clay would not be able to withstand um, the conditions of having to blow in the wind and hit each other. They would, the little pieces would break. Because when the clay fires to higher temperatures, the molecules of the clay are able to bond closer together and make a stronger bond. One, two, three, four, five. Three more, six, ooh, getting close, seven, some of them come up, that's fine, and I'm going to pull those out later, eight, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one more, eight, all right. Now I have the little pieces that are going to be hanging. I'm going to be putting holes in those so that I can tie a string to them. Um, I would recommend using a very strong string, maybe a fishing line or um, high grade fabric string. Um, if you're just going to use a thin jewelry line, it's going to break and not hold. Okay, I'm going to use my needle tool to cut out my big moon. Right. Needle tool's a good knife because it whips right through that clay. Okay. All right. All the excess out of the way, and I'm just going to smooth this down, pinch off any of that rugged areas. Make sure it's flat to dry. Okay. You're going to want to fire this to at least cone five, maybe even all the way up to seven. So I'm using my needle tool to make my holes. I'm going all the way down and then drawing a circle on the inside to make sure it's going all the way through. Each of these holes are going to be where the string ties to that holds for the individual pieces that hang. One, two, three, four. And then one at the top. Okay. Now I have the top piece done. This is just going to sit and dry. Uh, make sure it's all the way dry, bone dry, before firing it the, for the first time. And I would recommend using a glaze on the outside so that it's nice and strong. The more layers on your clay with the glaze, the stronger it becomes and bonds together. Okay, now each of these little stars need a hole. I'm going to make them the same way with the tip of my needle tool. Put them right in there. Make sure not to have too thin of areas 
Because if that happens, then if something beats right there and it's too thin, it's going to break and your star is going to fall off. So, all right. So go for the middle of that star point. This one got a, a piece of cookie cutter here. So I'm going to use my rib and just make it flat so it doesn't have that little ugly area there. You can do that anytime you see the area is not smooth as you want it. Okay. Little star, hole. Hole. All right, and when you attach your pieces of your wind chime, you're going to want to make sure you space them out evenly so that you have two tied on each string, about like this, and that they'll be every other so that on the next string they'll be about right here so that they can touch, but maybe not that they touch every time they're sitting next to each other. All right, so that's how you make the raw materials for your wind chime. Thank you very much.